Spaced is an all-time classic, part of the wave of early 2000s comedies which eschewed traditional sitcom rules by ditching laugh tracks and experimenting in presentation, it felt fresh. Written by and starring Simon Pegg and Jessica Hines as Tim and Daisy, the show was about the two moving into a new flat and combining mundane day-to-day life with Hollywood and sci-fi cliches. It's really a show that just works, and although it only produced two short series, every episode is brilliant and stands the test of time. After series two had finished in 2001, the cast had all gone on to do other and bigger things in film and TV, and there was no planned series three. Then, in 2008, America came knocking and produced a pilot for a US remake of the show. I don't normally talk too much about the background of the remakes in these videos, but in the case of Spaced, it's particularly pertinent, and I'll explain why. Because of the type of licensing deal that the original show had, its creators had no legal right to oppose a remake, so it was made without their consent or involvement, and they made it very clear that they didn't give consent. In this Guardian article from 2008, Simon Pegg says the fact that neither himself nor Jessica Hines, nor the director of the show, Edgar Wright, had been consulted was an effective vote of no confidence in the very people who created the show. That they displayed a sheer lack of respect in respectively selling out and appropriating our ideas without even letting us know. Edgar Wright said, That show was very personal to us. It's about Simon and Jessica, not just some format or high concept. And that he has a terrible recurring dream of being burgled in broad daylight. Jessica Hines was also very annoyed about not being involved stating that she contacted the American producers, asking that if she'd been in the garden when they are called. So, before this pilot had even been shown, it was getting bad press. The above statements meant that fans of the original would already be firmly against the show, and people that perhaps didn't know about Spaced, but were fans of Simon Pegg or the others, would follow their advice and stay away. This almost sets up the remake to fail. The only avenue it would have left to succeed, if they continued on this path, would be to garner an entirely new audience that the original didn't have, or just be so brilliant that anyone who watches it will just love it no matter what. Let's find out if they succeeded, shall we? So the pilot opens up on a view of the Golden Gate Bridge, signalling that the location has moved to San Francisco. Not a bad choice, I suppose, but to be honest, I don't know enough about American cities to know of a better location. We then see this really odd gag of a bird flying into a window. It's very strange. Then we see Ben, who has replaced Tim, talking to his girlfriend as he's being kicked out. Oh, was that it? Because that's crazy! I cried at the end of Lord of the Rings, remember? At Minas Tirith, when Aragorn walks up to Frodo and they bow and he says, My friends, you bow to no one. I cried for weeks. It doesn't matter anymore, Ben. In the original version, this scene was intercut with both Tim and Daisy talking to different people, but making the audience think they were talking to each other in order to set them both up right away. This version doesn't do that and focuses more on Ben. I'm not sure why they did this, as it weakens the plot, since we don't get the feeling of both of them crossing paths in the same way later on. Since this was made a few years after the original, they have updated a lot of the references, changing the Terminator 2 reference to Lord of the Rings. These are some of the few changes that actually make sense. So after Ben gets kicked out, we see this little animation of his ex shooting him. This is one of the few things I actually like. I find these quite cool to look at. The art style of the comics isn't as good as the more twisted, surreal ones from the original show, but the animation themselves are a good idea. We then meet our replacement for Daisy, April. Although I am using a slightly different strategy, see for me it's less about going out into the world and actively like searching, and more about waiting for something to just sort of uh, like magically appear before me. It's like the secret. So why are you looking for a place? Um, the scene has moved from a small London cafe to a more upscale coffee shop, but it serves the same function as the original in getting the two to meet. They have a chat for a while before a montage of them getting to know each other and finally deciding to move in together, with the caveat that they are going to have to pretend that they are together in order to meet the requirements. We then get the scene of them discussing each other's backstories. These are changed quite a lot from the original and unfortunately a lot less funny. This is a good time to mention the slight tonal difference from the original to this, and it's a little hard to describe. You see, in the original, there is this moment where Tim is recalling Daisy's backstory, one part being that she got a third from uni, followed by a little bit of dialogue 
where Daisy explains it away. Uh, you graduated from Kingston Poly. University. Whatever, in 1996, with a degree in humanities for which you received a third. Which is fine, because that's what I expected to get. Michelle from EastEnders got a third. Did you know that? Anyway, it's not the, the grade that matters, it's being there that counts, okay? The point of these lines is that we get a bit of insight into Daisy's character, that she's a bit of an underachiever, but also that she's somewhat defensive about it, as she had those points ready to go. However, she also, as a person, wants to remain truthful and not change aspects of her life, as it's something she could easily have lied about. The American version uses different facts, but makes it clear that anything April doesn't like about her past, she's just going to change and make up, but it's played off as something a bit cute and quirky. April June Rush, born March 12, 1979, Madison, Wisconsin. Mother Lydia, father Declan, you have one older sister, one younger sister, one brother. Yeah, can we switch the younger sister for an adopted Korean boy? We're pretending. We can do anything we want. Oh, and also my dad was sort of a drag, so let's make him cool. Ooh, let's make him little John. Yeah! Your dream is to one day write a novel that gives voice to a generation, but in the meantime, you write short pieces of investigative journalism for prominent magazines. <laughs> Your best friend is Vivian de la Peña, who you met at a job interview you did not get, but she did. After that, your friendship grew as Vivian taught you the secrets to her great success. You sort of play the flute, uh, you can hold your breath for a minute, a minute ten. ten. Uh-huh, and I love you because you're smart, you're funny, you're upbeat, and you're largely disconnected from reality, but in a cute way. Thank you. Hey, I wouldn't say... This is something they do a lot. All of the performances could be described as a bit quirky. The actors just say their lines in a way that the audience knows they are trying to be funny and weird not acting like normal people. What made Spaced so good was just how straight a lot of the strange moments were played. The characters acted completely serious in bizarre situations which made it so much more funny and believable, but the American cast is just not able to pull that off. Anyway, we get to the flat and another difference is immediately obvious, the flat itself. For some very weird reason I'll never understand, they made the flat itself huge and empty and completely bland they just sit right down and go straight to the interview. In the original, the flat is a character as much as the rest of the cast, and they make a point to explore it initially, with lots of little jokes as they walk around it, building up to this jump scare. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's perfect for a child. Yeah. Very young. Homey. Homey, yeah, homey, homey. It's very homey. What's this? <laughs> We finished cleaning the cupboard, Mrs. Klein. Oh, did it take you long? Yes. It took forever. And ever. And ever. The remake has none of that. Sucking the life out of it and just making the flat a setting and nothing more. Really bad call because the whole show is supposed to revolve around this place. So they get the flat and they both go to pick up their things just like in the original. The jokes aren't as good but the scenes are pretty similar overall. <laughs> and you got no right to be upset. Yeah, I'm choosing to move my life forward. I'm living for me now, and guess what? If you can't handle that, then too bad. Do you love her? No, no. I don't, I love you. I've always loved you, and until the day I die, you will always be the only woman for me. We get this very sitcom-y joke of them moving in, and then the flat is completely done and unpacked, not crowded with boxes and things like the original is much of the time. Next scene shows Ben explaining his comic to April in a similar way that Tim did to Daisy. Unlike the original, when April brings up a potential plot hole, Ben just caves in and clams up whereas Tim came up with an answer. Make some more. Uh, what? You know, why doesn't he just whip up another batch of the hydroxy-5 opa-dopa stuff? Come on, no, he can't. He... He's... Don't worry about it. You're not getting it. No, no, I get it, I get it. I just think it needs to be a little bit clearer, you know? I mean, it is... So, why didn't the... Doctor just make the uh, oxypoxidrin again. Well, because he invented it by accident, didn't he? You know, and these mutants here, they're like mistakes he's made as he's tried to recreate the serum. And uh, you like see that guy's got a really big head. Uh, mm. Make some more. This might seem uh, like what? an odd decision, but the reason they did this comes up later in the episode, and that is conflict. They're trying very hard 
to make it seem like these characters do not get along once they moved in together. But it just does not come across in the performances whatsoever. There isn't the chemistry to make this work. This bit here, when he takes up the bins, is meant to show friction, but because of that quirky style they went with, it just comes off as a bit awkward. Oh. I'm taking out the trash. I'm making a list. Okay, things... Following this, we see April looking around Ben's room and finding comics that makes her think he's a psycho serial killer. We then get introduced to our replacement for Brian, this time called Christian. This guy does his best job at this role, but just can't replace the incredibly weird and intense energy that Mark Heap brought to the character. When they show the scenes of him explaining his art, it is in every sense less impactful than the original version of these scenes. Anger. Cosi bastardo! Fear. Aggression. Pain. Watercolors? No, 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 no. It's, it's, it's a bit more complex than that. Mm. The art world, uh, it's a cesspool of money and mini crab cakes. Yeah, people want art, but they want it bright and happy. <laughs> what is happy? Oh, what kind of thing do you do? Anger. Pain. Fear, aggression, watercolours, or it's a bit more complex than that. This is the character I think that the writers had the most problem with in transferring over to an American remake. He doesn't stick around for long and doesn't do much, and I can imagine if this would have made it to a full series his role would have been somewhat limited. At this point, we get a divergence, with the rest of the episode being more or less original content and not just reused material. In the original, the rest of the episode is just them sitting in the flat having a chat, but in this one, they instead decide to go out and get what they call cream puffs, which I think are just profiteroles. This new content is the worst part of the episode, and it's pretty dire. The interaction here with them talking about Gears of War feels almost improvised, like the actors were just making up time. It's good, right? You know, cream-filled fun, quality time with the boys, and back to my place for some good old-fashioned American video carnage, huh? How's that float your boat, Benji? Hmm? Uh, I don't know, Bill. I, I'm not really the best company right now. Come on, Ben. Got Gears of War locked and loaded back at the spot. You know what? Some of the time. Bow. Hmm. No. Yeah. You don't want this. You don't want the, what if I take this little friend here and I just do that? No, none of that. What if I do this? That's the safety. I know, you need no. it off in order to kill people. Oh my God. No, I've got a family. i got a video game family. Oh, I'm hit. You mother. All right, take it easy. Of course I'm at. Hey, there's my Uncle Barry. Okay. <laughs> Let me remind you that a pilot is supposed to be the absolute best part of a show, really trimmed down to the cream of the crop so it can present itself in the best light, there shouldn't be a place for moments like this. This is followed up by a confrontation between Ben and his ex and her new boyfriend, where it seems like they're about to have a fight before everyone gets involved and they throw in a bunch of different film references instead of having a fight. The thing is about these references is that because this is made in America, it feels like Hollywood is referencing itself. When these sort of moments came up in the UK version, it was funny because of the vast difference between a small flat in London to a Hollywood action movie, but this doesn't have that contrast, so it comes off as somewhat forced. They win the fight, and the final scene sees them having a toast to their new flat and living situation, and the episode ends, that's it. What can we make of that then? Well, the first word I would use is bland. There is this quality of space that you get the impression that the cast absolutely loved making it, that everyone was contributing to it creatively, that Edgar Wright was having a blast using all of these different filmmaking techniques for a simple TV sitcom, and this remake just doesn't have any of it. It feels corporate, made to fill a quota or a time slot. The cast does their best with what they have been given, but they lack the chemistry and spark that made the original so watchable. Spaced was never a good choice for a remake, and it's clear to see 
why this didn't succeed. Thank you for watching this video. If you want to subscribe to my channel to see more videos like this, that would be hugely appreciated. And you can even sign up to my Patreon if you like, where I have an exclusive video about the American version of the IT crowd, which you can watch on a free trial if you prefer. Let me know in the comments below if you have any suggestions for other things I should watch in the future. Thanks again. Goodbye.